Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our revision lesson today. And our revision lesson today will deal with a number of different subjects. I've added in uh, something uh, in addition to what I uh, uh, advertised, and that was uh, losing trick count and also fourth suit forcing. I've popped in um, a hand where I'm going to just cover about the whole idea of control bidding, which was something that a few people had a few uh, some problems with the other day on control bidding. So we'll have a hand where we'll look at that and study it for a little bit. And I also want to touch on another subject, which is uh, linked with fourth suit forcing, and that is what does the bid of the third suit mean? So there's times when we bid a third suit where th that bid um, may not necessarily convey what you think it conveys. It's all a very interesting little area. And um, so we're diving a little bit deeper into fourth suit forcing because I want, to make, um, I want to make it clear to everyone that it's very important to um, play um, a system such as fourth suit forcing you need to add it into your basic overall bidding structure. It's not like um, whether you can choose to play a convention or not. It is basically quite essential. So you need to understand the basis behind uh, the, uh, um, the use of fourth suit forcing. Okay, first couple of hands we've got up and going today, everyone, is just a little um, backtrack on uh, how to count losers and how that can help you in the bidding. So on this particular hand, you're sitting north and your partner opens a diamond. You respond to spade and partner jumps to four spades. So once partner does raise your bid, you can think of it in two different um, um, contexts. You can think of it in, in a sense of points or you can think of it in a sense of losers. How do we count losers on a hand such as this? Well, when partner jumps to four spades, they're saying opposite your uh, minimum hand where I'm good enough to go to game. So you would expect them to hold somewhere around about 18, 19 points. And no, everyone, um, there's a great question here and I get this asked time and again and I did mention it the other day. So good timing, Louise, that you asked that question, uh, that uh, four spades was a shutout bid. We, I think there's one auction you may be confusing it with and that auction you may be confusing it with is a one spade opening and a four spade response showing a weak freak raise. But either way, no, there's no such thing as a shutout bid if the partner who jumped to game is unlimited. So this player jumped to game south, north bid one spade. Is north limited for their one spade bid? No, they're not. They could have six points up to the ceiling. So if that's the case, then there's no such thing as four spades being a shutout bid. It simply defines the type of hand that they have. Okay, so in, in the sense of losers, uh, that four spade bid is equivalent to five losers. Well, how do we know that? Well, a minimum hand around about 13 to 15 or 12 to 15 points typically has seven losers. So as you go up in every three point range, uh, your hand deducts a loser. So if 12 to 15 or 12 to 14 is seven losers, then 15 to 17 is about six losers. And then uh, 18 or 19 will be around about five losers. So partner in a loser sense has five losers for their jump to four spades. Well, let's add your losers to theirs. And let's see where we get to. We've got two here in spades. We're missing the king queen. We've got one in hearts, one card, and it's missing the ace. There's another one, that's three. We've got two cards in diamonds, and the only two that you should consider, therefore, are the ace king, so there's a further two. And you're missing the king queen of clubs here, so that is another two losers. So you can only, the maximum number of losers you can have in, the suit, in any suit is three. If you have less than three cards, then the maximum number of losers if you have two cards is two. The maximum number of losers if you have one card is one. And you only consider if it's one card, the ace, if it's two cards, the ace king. But when you've got three cards here and three cards here, you consider ace, king, and queen. Two losers, one loser, two losers, two losers, seven losers. So there's the magical number with losing trick count is 24. 
Why? Because that's the maximum number of losers that two hands could have together. Well, let's uh, work out how many tricks you can take because you subtract the actual number of losers from the maximum. If the maximum is 24, you have how many? Seven. Partner has how many? Five. So you add yours and partners together. Seven and five is 12. You take it away from 24 and that equals 12. And that should be, or should give you an estimate of how many tricks you can take. Well, we need to obviously check on aces. We can't just jump to slam here. So we do that. We use Roman key card because we've got seven losers here. This is Roman key card Blackwood. Partner shows two key cards plus the queen. You've got two key cards. Four key cards plus the queen is the minimum number of key cards and uh, location of the queen of trumps needed to look for slam. Now, it's possible that without the queen of trumps, you may have risked going to slam on this hand. Why? Because you've got six spades and partner's got four, that's 10. So um, you might have risked going to slam, missing the queen of trumps because you're only missing three and the queen is likely to drop. Anyhow, partner has it, so we bid slam. Let's give it a, let's give it a play here. The opponents lead the ace of hearts. And let's count our tricks. Well, we've got six trump tricks, ace king of clubs, ace king of diamonds, that's 10. And if trumps break 2 1, then we've got two leftover trumps in dummy, and these two baby clubs here, once we've voided dummy after the ace king of clubs, would be able to get trumped in dummy. So on 2 1 trumps, everyone, this hand looks like a doddle. But Let's see what happens once we do get on to play as declarer. We trump in and we, we're prepared to draw trumps. If South didn't have the queen of spades, what would they bid? Well, the response, Diane, for not having the queen of spades is five hearts. So again, five clubs uh, is naught or three, uh, five diamonds, one or four, five hearts, two without the queen, five spades, two with the queen. Some people like to switch five clubs and five diamonds, and that's absolutely up to them. So, declare is in, and now we're going to draw trumps. Ah, East has shown out. Well, now we've got to take stock on this hand, everyone. We've still got two baby trumps here, and we could uh, play uh, our four round, um, play to trump both of our rounds of clubs in dummy with those two baby trumps. But that runs a risk. And the risk that that runs is not necessarily with the first round of the trump suit. It's actually with our uh, first round of club roughs. It's actually the second round. What if it turns out that this hand has at least four cards and clubs? That means if we trump with the nine or the two of spades, we're going to be over trumped by the jack or the ten. So now the idea of trumping two rounds of clubs and dummy won't work. I think we should be taking all three trumps out here, trumping one club in dummy, and setting up our last round of diamonds here. So how many diamonds do we have, everyone? We've got five in hand, uh, in dummy, two in hand, that's seven, which means the opponents have six, six including the queen. We could take a finesse for the queen, that, and that would be our extra 12th trick, but what are the odds of the finesse? 50-50. I often say that my finesses um, come true about 25% of the time, but I'm in, maybe I'm one of those glass half empty declarers. Um, or you could rely on setting up the fifth diamond. Now setting up the fifth diamond requires the suit to break either 3-3 three, three or 4-2. Four, now the odds of that happening are well in excess of 80%. In fact, close to 85%. So if that's the case, that looks like the better line. So that's what we're going to do, everyone. Draw trumps in three rounds. Now go about our diamond suit, watching what drops. Well, they've both followed to one. And they've both followed to two, perfect. So there's two more diamonds out, including the queen. I can trump two of them in my hand here with those two trumps, and I can always get back to dummy 
uh, with the king of clubs and by trumping the last club. And that should be our third, our 12th trick should be a long diamond. So let's go about that. We'll trump the third round of diamonds, the 10 drops. We play a club to, to our king. We trump the fourth round of diamonds. The jack is now high, our fifth round, so we play ace of clubs. Trump a club with the last trump and the jack of diamonds, everyone, is our 12th trick. And you can see that uh, that would be a better line of play to try and trump out the, uh, the four di or uh, four two diamond break rather than rely on a diamond finesse for our contract. Okay, any questions about that hand as we're going along? Do we understand about the losers? Well, if we do have an understanding, let's move on to the next one because we've got a lot of hands to get through. There's eight hands today. And here we go. This is your hand as south. Partner's opened a diamond as north. You respond to heart. Partner bids one spade. So sometimes partner may be balanced. There's some players who like to bid one spade here despite holding only four diamonds and four spades, which I think is fine. And there's some players who like this, this option to promise an unbalanced hand. That is a hand where you would have at least perhaps five diamonds and four spades or a four, 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 one. So um, I'm happy either way. And the hand in question, I've actually bid one spade with a balanced hand and only four, four on the north card. So let's look at the south hand. We've got an eight card trump fit. And everyone on that note, I really would like to um, break in there and ask a question of you. And that is, uh, have you noticed how nine card trump fits are so much easier to play? Nine cards and 10 card trump fits, much easier to be declarer than eight card trump fits. And the reason that is the case is because you have far greater control on the hand. And Quite often what will happen too, when you've got nine or more trumps, you can go about drawing trumps at an earlier occasion on the hand. With eight card trump fits, you'll find an enormous amount of time that you have to be doing something outside of the trump suit before attacking the trump suit when you've only got eight of them. Why? Because sometimes you have to be able to um, uh, balance whether you should be um, cross trumping the hand or whether you should be setting up a long side suit. A uh, question here um, from Susan was about whether you should splinter on the south hand. Uh, splintering wouldn't be a bad idea except, except the south hand is not quite good enough to splinter, I don't think. And here's the other big, big thing or the most important thing I find with um, a respondent um, splintering is that nine card trump fits always make a big difference when it comes to splinters. And in this hand, it's almost certain 99% that we only have an eight card trump fit. Why? Because partner didn't open one spade. So I think this hand falls a bit short of a splinter and I most certainly don't really want to encourage partner to go hurtling off to slam when I'm, I'm limited uh, in my values on this hand. But let's try um, uh, back to what I'm talking about, nine card trumpets versus eight card trumpets. This is why I'm pushing people to learn systems such as Bergen raises, to learn things such as splinter bids, to learn things uh, such as Jacoby Tuno Trump always promising four card support. Why? Because this unearths the nine card trumpet, which is the magic to a lot of, um, of declare play hands. Now, this one looks like an eight card trump fit, but I'm still keen to uh, get to game and I'm gonna count my losers. Well, I've got two here in spades, two here in hearts, two in diamonds, one in clubs. My partner hasn't promised anything more than a minimum hand. That means I've got seven losers. A minimum hand is seven losers. Seven plus seven is 14. Take it away from the magical what? 24. And that should suggest how many tricks we're likely to take. 24 minus 14, 10, so a bid game. Okay, now we're in four spades from the north seat. East leads the queen of clubs. 
Now, this is what I mean about eight card trump fits, everyone. Eight card trump fits are often very tricky. We have to think about how we maneuver the play in order to be able to gain enough tricks. And if we go about simply drawing trumps in both hands and they, um, they, they kindly break three and two, we're left with one trump in dummy and one trump in our hand. And not exactly what you would call a great bunch of side suit winners here. Now, I think the key to this hand is to first of all, not waste uh, dummies entries uh, early because I really want to set up the heart suit. So what I mean about wasting dummies entries is I don't want to trump a club immediately because I want to use that club rough for when I'm forced by the opponents to take it. So I think my initial plan is to win the ace of clubs, draw one round of, of trumps to dummy and play a, a heart off dummy towards my queen. I mean, it could be my lucky day. I could have the double to ace of hearts here in the east hand. And I think that might be the best approach to uh, making our required number of tricks. But that's what my plan is. Go over to dummy with a high trump. Still three trumps out. And now play a low heart towards my queen. They can't rise west if they have the ace because they'll just make my queen and my king into winners separately. And when I play the queen, it holds the trick. Have a look at that 10. Well, that 10 has dropped. People may remember a hand that I played yesterday when I was playing with, with Barbara. Hi, Barbara. Well done. Should I call you 65% Barbara? <laughs> really David yesterday and heaps of fun. Um, uh, uh, dummy or declarers won the queen of hearts here and what happened a similar thing yesterday where the jack of spades dropped when we played towards the shorter honor so when i play a heart back towards dummy now i'm not going to touch any more trumps i'm going to play the nine why because we know where the ace is now we don't know where the jack is but i'm going to give ourselves the best chance here so the nine forces the ace that means the rest of the hearts are high well, that's easy from here because once my opponents then continue the suit, if they play a low diamond, I'm happy to play the king. Loses to the ace. Oh, well. They continue diamonds. And then they force dummy to trump in. Well, I should be okay from here as long as trumps break 3-2. So I'm going to... Um, play a heart from dummy. Don't know why I actually popped that in there, but I did. And now I'm going to draw my two rounds of trumps back to my, uh, to dummy. That was an error to play that heart, everyone. Must have been a tired button I pushed. Trumps are all drawn. And now you can see the king of hearts drops the jack. Oh, the jack's already gone, sorry, we trumped one. And all our hearts are winners. So. The whole idea everyone on that hand was because it's an eight card trump fit, we needed to be careful by attacking the side suits first. Okay, one more hand on losing trick count. And this is one that I thought I'd throw in there because it's in an area that you haven't seen yet. And the area is, how many losers does partner show when they make a weak jump over call? And there's your answer. So one diamond from east, two spades from partner in the south hand, and that everyone promised for the weak jump over call, just as it would with a weak two. It promised seven to eight losers in the hand. That's what you play partner to hold. Well, how many losers do you have here in the north hand? Two in spades, one in hearts, that's up to three, two in diamonds, two in clubs. So we've got seven losers here in the north hand. Partner's got seven or eight. What does that mean? It means if partner's got seven, then seven plus seven is 14. Take it away from 24, we can make game. But if partner's got eight, if they're a minimum hand, we can only, uh, or we probably won't make game. So what I'm going to do on this hand, everyone, is invite partner to game. And a free raise to three spades is exactly that. It says, partner, I've got about seven losers over here. Uh, 
If you've got uh, seven losers yourself for your week two bid, then please raise. So what does partner have over here? Let's count them. One loser in spades, three in hearts, that's up to four. One in diamonds is five, two in clubs, that's seven losers. So partners are what we would call a maximum for their two spade weak jump over call, certainly in, in losers. And partner therefore decides to raise to four spades. So they accept the, um, Vivian's asking a question. Can you explain the 24 trick please? Yes, okay. Everyone, uh, you have to think about it this way. Do people have copies of notes? People have copies of their notes um, for losing trick count? I didn't send them out again today because I know that people will have them somewhere. But where the uh, number of 24 comes from is if you can picture the, two, uh, the worst hand that you can pick up, that is a 4-3-3-3 three, three, three shape, and uh, uh, no points in your hand. Well, a 4 3 3 3 shape and no honors in your hand means that each suit has three losers, and the suit that has four, lose, uh, four cards, obviously the fourth card is considered a winner. So picture two of these hands together. The maximum number of losers in any given hand, the worst given hand, is 12. So two of these hands together means 12 plus 12 is 24. 24 is the maximum number of losers that uh, a partnership could have with the two worst hands possible at the table. So you look at the maximum number of losers and then you subtract from that the actual number of losers you have and that's how you get to the number of winners or tricks that your hand can take. So just to um, uh, repeat that, where does the 24 come from? It comes from two 12s added together. If you can, what, where does the 12 come from? 12 is the worst possible hand you can have, the most balanced hand, which is a 4-3-3-3, three, 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 and no points or no ace-king-queens in that, in that hand. So if there's no ace-king-queens, that means that every suit has three losers. Why don't we have 13 losers on the hand? because the fourth round of the suit is considered always to be a winner. So the maximum is 12, 12 plus 12 is 24. That's where it comes from, okay? Um, everyone, some other people like the method of subtracting it from 18 and that will tell you what level to bid at. So if this is seven and you've got seven, that's 14. 18 minus 14 is I'll bid for at the four level. So that's another way to look at it. Um, it's up to the individual. So we're in four spades and West has led the two of diamonds. Okay, everyone, this looks like, uh, this looks like a good contract, very good contract, in fact. But I'm a little bit worried about East having opened the bidding. Um, I think Kathy might have mentioned East had, uh, East had, Eight losers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes, they did, but I mean, uh, when you open the bidding, you should open any hands, in my opinion, with 12 plus points. Don't even worry about how many losers you've got. In fact, you'll find that quite often minimum opening hands, or the most balanced ones anyhow, uh, tend to, um, most balanced hands, the most balanced hands, uh, tend to have eight losers, um, but there's also some minimum hands that have six losers. So we say the average is seven. Let's look at the play. We've got no losers in spades, hopefully. Um, in fact, we can almost guarantee against losing spades, um, the way you play the trump suit. In diamonds, you've got none. In clubs, you've got two. And in hearts, you've got the ace, queen, and 10, opposite three small. Now. This suit is, it's possible to take a double finesse in hearts. That is to finesse for West to hold either the jack or the queen. And if they hold one of them, then uh, we will um, be able to take our 10th trick in hearts. So first of all, let's um, find out a little bit about the location of the diamond honors. And when West has led the two, they could have an honor. 
When East plays the 10, uh, I've got a strong feeling that that 10 may be from Queen Jack 10. It could just be from Jack 10. And I'm hoping that when I give all of these hands, and I got a really lovely comment from um, uh, one of the players yesterday who's saying that um, it's the thought process uh, that helps their game. And they're finding that they always um, listen to what I say about going through and watching the cards and stopping playing bridge automatically. And th this is the way to look at things here. The two could have an honor, but it won't be the jack. It might be the queen. The 10 could be from jack 10 or queen jack 10. So that's why I ran it around to my king. And then we attack spades. I could have played the king in my hand to guard against West having a four zero um, in spades. I'm lucky this time they didn't. Um, I probably should have done that. So that was a bit of a slip. Well, now it's East who holds three cards in spades. So what are we starting to pick up about the East hand here? They've got three spades. They've probably got four diamonds because it looks like they've led low from three. Um, that means that if they've got three spades and four diamonds, they can only be balanced. So if East is balanced, then they can't be 15 to 17 because they didn't open one no trump. So that's a, something to bear in mind. And that means that West must have some high card points. And let's, ho let's hope that or some of those high card points are in the heart suit. So we continue to draw all of the trumps out. And then I think I'll start to try and find out where those club honors are located. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to play a club. East wins the jack. And then East plays the queen of clubs. And West decides to overtake with the king. West did that, I think, to play another diamond. So now when they do play another diamond, I think I can comfortably pinpoint the diamond position now, everyone. I think I'm quite certain that West has three small diamonds. And we'll work it out in a second when we trump a diamond in our hand. And they do. So, the low, so East's points so far are Jack of Spades, Queen Jack of Diamonds, and what looks like Ace, Queen, Jack of Clubs. Because they, first of all, uh, took the Jack of Clubs and then they played back the Queen. So Ace, Queen, Jack, Queen, Jack, Jack. So that's already 11. And if East has both the King and the Jack of Hearts, that would be 15. And they probably would have opened one no trump. So now I think I'm going to take two finesses in Hearts through West, quietly confident that one of the King or the Jack of Hearts will be in the West hand. Now I'm going to finesse the 10. And sure enough, I was pretty confident that was the case, especially as I was the one who made the hand up. Okay, there we go. Have a look at that hand a little bit and maybe play the, the replay again. And it gives you a bit of an insight on how to count the points around the table, look at the distribution around the table. And I know we've normally only got you know, six and a half minutes for a, um, a hand of bridge, but as you do these things more often, you'll find that these things become more and more natural. Okay, let's move on. Some fourth suit forcing hands, everyone. Here you go, you're dealt this hand of south. Partner opens a club, you respond to heart, partner bids a spade, similar scenario to last hand, we know they've got four spades. And you could bid three no trump on this hand, but one of the things I loathe about a jump to three no trump is players who jump to three no trump when they don't have a double stopper in the critical unbid suit. Well, South only has one stopper, and there's many other contracts that could be um, uh, uh, playable on this hand than three no trump. So South has a classic fourth suit forcing style of hand. Tell me more. Tell me, have you got a diamond stopper partner? Tell me, have you got three card support for me partner? Tell me, have you got extra length in your suits partner? So partner does exactly that. 
they now show you three card heart support. Perfect. So now we choose the 5-3 heart fit for game. And partner pops down a perfectly appropriate hand. Okay. Much rather be in four hearts than three no trump. Everyone, do you agree with that? Much rather be in, I mean, three no trump would be a pretty poor contract. You'd have one diamond stopper, and then you'd be relying on wonderful things to happen in, uh, in spades, I think. Two club tricks, one diamond is three, two hearts is five, and you'd need all four spade tricks. Well, the odds of that are not terribly strong. So uh, four hearts, however, is a great contract and probably needs very little. And in fact, uh, the ace of diamonds places an important card in the West hand. The important card it places in the West hand is, hand is the king of diamonds. So you can see what's going to happen here when we finish trick one. You've got the queen jack of diamonds here. West has the king. And as long as you have a trump in dummy, you can take what they call a, a roughing finesse through West. Lead the queen. If they cover with the king, you trump it and your jack becomes high. Lead the queen. If they don't cover with the king, you throw away. And then you subsequently trump the jack in dummy. So you need to pop that in the back of your mind for later on in the hand. Well, West thinks that the heart uh, holding in dummy is an issue, so West switches to a trump. Now, what's my plan on this hand? Well, again, I told you I'm going to take a roughing finesse in diamond, but I want to combine all of my lines of play on this hand. It looks like I'll prob hearts are probably breaking three, two. Um, I don't, as long as there's a heart in dummy, I can always take a roughing finesse in diamond. And I've got the ace king of clubs opposite the two small here, but I've got a potential spade loser. I could finesse for the queen or I could try to set up the fifth club in dummy. You'll notice there's a bit of a trend on a couple of these hands today, and that is the trend is that we're tending to see that it's off, it can often uh, pay to set up dummy's five card suit. So I think the first thing we need to do is draw another round of trumps and hope the suit breaks three, two, which it looks like it was. There you go, it is breaking three, two. And now everyone, don't waste the entry to dummy by taking the roughing diamond hook finesse because you need to leave that entry there for later on. What you need to do is to start setting up the club suit. That's what we do. Club to the king. And we're watching six clubs drop. Two have dropped so far. Play the ace. Another two have dropped. So let's try and trump a club in our hand. We do. And West has a decision to make. Does West over Trump or does West discard? Well, it doesn't look, I mean, if, if you choose to win a trick, I mean, the opponents aren't going to let you in West, are they, to draw your two Trumps with their Jack? There's nothing really you can get in with here on the West hand. So if that's the case, I think West might as well over Trump. And in fact, it doesn't make any difference whether they do or not. And then the obvious thing to do is to switch to a spade through the ace. So that's what we'll do. The eight of spades saying uh, the reverse of lead low like. We play the nine. We're back to declarer's hand here. Taking two, two shots at a finesse. East covers with the 10. We win with the king. And now, everyone, we need to be able to utilize that entry to dummy in the nine of hearts. And this is the moment where we take the roughing finesse and diamond. Queen of diamonds, they don't cover. So what do you do? Which card do you throw away from dummy, everyone? If they haven't covered with the queen, should you throw a spade or should you throw a club? Give me some of your thoughts. Spade, well done, Joan, well done. It's exactly what you're going to do. You want to throw away a spade because you want to set up that extra club in dummy and you want to utilize your entries to do so. Well done, Joan. Joan's one of our newer players and, she's, and she, I think she's got the bridge bug. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to leave the jack of diamonds. When they cover, you trump it. 
And now you play the critical fourth round of clubs to set up your fifth round. And now the last club and dummy is a winner. All of the trumps are gone. So you draw the uh, spade to the ace, fifth club, throwing away your spade, and then you've got a trump trick. And that's 11 tricks, everyone. So a number of things to consider on that hand, uh, and including the roughing finesse, including setting up a side suit. But so many of these declare a play hands are a, a, they're, they're a little bit bitsy. And uh, a friend of mine in Melbourne, many years ago when we were young players, he said, it's all about combining your chances on a hand. That's what he said to me when we were a younger player. And I think he's right. If you look about all, at all the different possibilities on the hand and then pop it together and see what comes out as the best option. And he's one of, one of the finest card players in Australian Bridge. Okay, let's have a look here. So there's your hand and you are the um, responder, everyone. Partner opens a club, South, and you as North bid a diamond. South bids one spade. And with this particular hand, everyone, um, we're not quite sure where we're going on this hand. We can't bid no trumps because we don't want to play no trumps from our side, even if partner holds a stopper. If this hand is, belongs in no trumps, it belongs in no trumps from partner's side because partner is the one who's more likely to hold the stopper in hearts. And we would prefer the lead to always run around to the stopper rather than come through the stopper at trick one. So we've got time, we've got points, we bid three suits, how about we try a fourth by bidding two hearts? So that's what we do, we bid two hearts, which is fourth suit forcing, everyone. South bids three clubs showing uh, denying a heart stopper. Well, if they've got no heart stopper now, what are our chances for a contract? And when they bid three clubs, they're showing five or more clubs. So they've got five or more clubs, Four cards in spades, exactly, and they don't have a heart stopper. I think that rather than try to play five clubs on this hand, because that could be a level too high, how about we have a, a, a shot at playing in the 4 3 spade fit? I know it's not an eight card fit, but it could be our best option to play four spades in a 4 3 fit. And I'm quietly confident because my spades are good. Ace, queen, another. So there's every chance the partner's got the king when they bid one spade. So it looks like we've probably got the top three spades. Uh, no, it, um, question, would two hearts be a reverse by responder? Only if the opener had repeated their suit. I hope that makes sense, Camilla. So one club, one diamond, two clubs. Then two hearts would be a reverse. But when partners bid the third suit, this is simply fourth suit. And it is also an artificial bid, 100% artificial call. Claire's asking, North has only eight losers. Um, has eight losers? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There, that is eight, but that's a very negative or a pessimistic view on the hand, Claire. Because within those eight losers, we're giving nothing to the location of the Jack-10 of diamonds or the Queen of clubs. Now, when I give people a lesson on losing, losers and losing trick count, I mean, it's not the be all and end all of, of um, evaluation of hands. It's often there with unbalanced hands to give you a, um, a, a, an alternate way of, of evaluating your cards. But to say that's an eight loser hand means you're giving no value to jack 10 of diamonds or queen of clubs. I tend to call ace jack 10, I tend to call that uh, a two and a half loser suit. Diane, do you have to alert fourth suit forcing? Yes, you do, Diane, 100%. Okay, so I think we're going to have an aim at the 4 3 fit here in spades. So that's going to be our plan. And West decides to uh, lead off with the king of hearts. Okay, I'm glad we're not in 3 no trump, everyone, aren't you? It looks like if the hearts break 5-3, which they're more likely to do rather than 4-4, four, four, then uh, it appears that we will lose the top five or the first five heart tricks. 
So on the King of Hearts, we follow suit. Queen of Hearts, we follow suit. Jack of Hearts. Okay, what do we do, everyone? Seems natural to trump, doesn't it? But if you trump, how many trumps do the opponents have? Six. What are the odds that the suit will break three and three? Or whether the suit will break four and two? Which is more likely? As a young player, when I found this out, as a young player, um, thanks Deb, that's exactly the right play. On this particular hand, if you ditch a diamond, you're always going to lose a diamond anyhow. Then if the opponents continue hearts, you can trump in the short trump hand. So, if you trump in the long trump hand now, you will lose trump control. You'll draw three rounds of trumps, and then the opponents will eventually trump in, and they'll take a long heart trick. So resist the urge to trump here, everyone, and simply discard a loser. Now, that would have been fine if trumps were 3-3, three, three, but trumps break, or a suit breaks 4-2 more often than it breaks 3-3. Three, three. It breaks 4-2 about 42% of the time, and it breaks 3-3 three, three about 36% of the time. So the, we're going to guard against that, and now what can the opponents do? Well, if they continue a heart, I trump in dummy. If they don't, I'll win whatever the lead is and draw trumps. I'm winning the ace of diamonds. And now I've got four rounds of top trumps to play if I need them. Well, I don't care now if they're 4-2 or 3-3. Three, three. Well, they're 4-2. So I'm rewarded when I can draw the last round of trumps. And now I've got this luscious club suit with the queen opposite ace, king, jack to five. And I play low to the queen of clubs the club back to my hand and I've got the whole club suit covered. So interesting hand where fourth suit forcing actually persuaded your partnership to get to a uh, four, uh, four three fit rather than five two. So here we go. Interesting hand and this is uh, fits in the area where we have to discuss uh, what is fourth suit forcing at the one level? Is one spade ever fourth suit forcing? The answer is you should play one spade if the auction goes one club, one diamond, one heart. You should play one spade as natural, showing four spades, just in case a hand like this pops up. Or even a hand with three clubs, two diamonds, four hearts, four spades. For those who like to uh, bid their suits up the line, Barbara and I had a discussion about that yesterday, and that's what Barbara prefers always to bid her suits up the line, and I think that's absolutely fair. So on this hand, that means that when partner bids one spade, it's natural, not promising anything more than six points and four cards in spades. What would you do if you were in the south hand and you wanted to use fourth suit forcing? You would have to jump to two spades. So one spade here is natural. Two spades is fourth suit forcing. So if partner's got six points and four spades, I could actually jump to four spades on this hand based on losers. One, two, three, four, five. But I've decided with the four, 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 one shape and the four, four fit to take a bit of a low road on this hand and simply raise to three spades. Well, partner uh, bids on to four. Good diamond suit. Pathetic spades. My goodness, five, four, three, two. Um, but a good enough hand to raise to game anyhow. Okay, we're in four spades. Let's look at, sorry, pardon me. Let's look at the play on the Queen of Clubs League. Again, everyone, 4-4 four, four trump fit. They always seem to give us headaches. I mean, it, they're better than playing in a 4-3 trump fit more often than not, but they're not as easy as playing in 5-4 trump fits or 6-3 uh, trump fits. So it's the eight card trump fit where you need to take a little bit of care. So again, where are our tricks going to come from outside of the trump suit? Well, we could trump some clubs here in the south hand. We've got the top three hearts. But the beauty of a hand like this is really in the diamond suit. Once the ace of diamonds is knocked out, we've got a bunch of winners here. So I think rather than start trumping clubs in dummy immediately, 
again, or even drawing trumps. And remember, everyone, what if the suit does break 4-1? If you win the ace of clubs, draw out the ace king of spades, and then play a diamond, well, the hand with four trumps, if the, if the, if the hand suit does break 4-1, could win the ace of diamonds, draw out all of your trumps, and take the rest of the clubs. So don't run that, don't, uh, run that risk of drawing trumps too early. Play your diamond suit before the trump suit. Win the ace of clubs, and immediately play a diamond. For the king, they win with the ace, and then they decide to start tapping dummy, trying to get those trumps out of the south hand, which has all of the diamond entries. But I think you can start to draw trumps yourself and see what happens on this hand. Well, there's still three trumps out against you. So now, because the diamonds are set up, you can continue to draw out the trumps. Well, they do break 4-1, interesting. So the opponents have two winning trumps out against you. Why not utilize this last trump in dummy by trumping a club? Now you're in the right hand to play the winning diamonds. And that's what you do. You play winning diamonds, discarding a losing club, another winning diamond. West trumps in, but they're trumping with a master trump. That's fine. So you discard a, a losing heart. West takes their last trump. And that's the end of the game. They play the jack of clubs. You trump in. Then you've got ace, king, queen of hearts. What's interesting about this hand in particular? Um, well, the card play is interesting, but this is what I want you to take note of. The one spade bit, everyone, promises four cards and spades and no more than six points. Okay, two more to go. Here we are. Again, uh, the difference between an eight card and a nine card trump fit. South opens the bidding with one heart, and this is your hand as north. Now, everyone must have in their armory, um, uh, quick question from Harleen, why did you not respond one uh, major in the last hand? I didn't respond the major, everyone, if I can take you back to the original cards. One club. This is a hand where I, I, I'd almost be embarrassed to mention a suit with five, four, three, two, versus mentioning a suit with king, queen, jack, ten, another at the same level. Typically, I would always tend to respond one of a major, but the disparity between the two suits was, you know, it's like the difference between me and the Incredible Hulk. Um, uh, so that's why I think uh, one diamond response is better on this hand than one spade, would you not? Um, yep, so I hope that answers that. Good, so let's move on, and let's move on to this hand. So you have to have a strong raise in your armory, and the best strong raise, everyone, is opposite uh, one of the suit where you raise uh, partner with game points, 13 plus, and four or more card support via Jacoby raise. Uh, south in response to that shows a shortage. So that's typically how Jacoby raise works. If you rebid a suit other than the trump suit at the three level, it says partner, expect me to have a shortage in this suit. That is a singleton or a, or a void in spades. It doesn't necessarily promise any extra values. If south didn't have a singleton or a void, they would either bid three hearts or four hearts. Now this is a very basic um, style of Jacoby raise, and, but I think it's essential for people to, um, uh, to have uh, some sort of mechanisms within their um, Jacoby raise. Now, everyone, let's stop for a second and discuss control bidding. Control bidding occurs once uh, your partnership is in a uh, game forcing auction and you are between three of your known trump suit and four of your known trump suit. Well, the known trump suit everyone is hearts. So three spades occurred between three hearts and four hearts. So control bids work in such a way that you always look at the next suit up 
What's the next suit after spades? Well, it would be back around to clubs. Does North hold a control in clubs? Well, there's no ace or king, no singleton or void. So the answer to that is no. So North bypasses four clubs. So once they don't bid four clubs, they're saying to you, partner, partner, I don't have a control in clubs. But they go to the next suit, which is diamonds, and they ask the same question. Ace, king, singleton or void? Well, I've got the king. So the answer is yes, I'm going to show it. So North has, says, I've got a control in diamonds, but I don't have it in clubs. I, I know that when I gave that lesson yesterday about control bidding, um, uh, people were sort of split into two groups. Some thought this is terribly difficult, and others thought, and some of them may have had the lesson before, thought, well, I get that, because it always occurs between three of the known trump suit and four of the known trump suit. And everyone, you can narrow it down even smaller, and it only occurs when you've agreed a major, not a minor. I think that's the best approach. Look at it that way. So between three hearts and four hearts, or between three spades and four spades, you can show or deny one of these controls. Well, let's look at how important that four diamond is was for South. South has control in spades. South has control in clubs. And now you have control in diamonds. So South can comfortably bid for no trump, checking on key cards for your side, Roman key card Blackwood, and North shows two key cards plus the Queen of Trumps. You've got one, two yourself, so that's four key cards, and you also own the Queen of Trumps, so you comfortably go to slam. And West leads the Jack of Diamonds. I think this is the most fun hand of the day, everyone. Dummy had a good hand. They wouldn't have made a control bid without a good hand, I think. That control bid was not compulsory. If North just had 13 points, they could easily sign off in four hearts, but they didn't, so they showed extras, and they had extras. They had 16. When the Jack of Diamonds is led, I can count one trick in spades, six in hearts is seven, ace, king, queen of clubs is 10, and between the king and the queen of diamonds, then we have an, an 11th trick. But uh, the only way I can see a 12th trick is if clubs break three and three. There might be another option though. What do we know about the Jack of Diamonds lead from West? What does it promise everybody? The Jack of Diamonds lead from West promised another card. Promised a 10. The West has the 10 of Diamonds and I've got the nine. Very interesting. I think that if West holds the 10 of Diamonds, and maybe four or more cards in clubs, then they can't keep every one of those cards. Now this is provided I make East take the Ace of Diamonds at trick one. If I play the three, East with the Ace will play low, and then I will be forced to win with the Queen, which means uh, I haven't lost a trick yet, and I don't see the only chance after that would be to make sure clubs are 3-3. Three, three. But what I want to make sure I do here is force East to win the case of diamonds. And the only way that I can do that is by covering with the king and dummy. East does win the ace. And they continue a diamond. Now I know where the ten of diamonds is. So I'm going to pop the queen on that. And that wins. So now everyone, we know the ten of diamonds is in the west hand. I don't, there's nothing else we can do. We have to somehow get an extra trick. I can't throw the nine of diamonds on anything unless clubs are three, three. But I can also have that opportunity um, as we go along. So I think I'm going to draw the trumps. West has got two hearts. And then I'll play one more trump. And now I'm going to Trump a spade in my hand, and then I'm going to get to this last ending, the last five cards, and I'm going to play the Jack of Hearts, and have a look at West's hand. 
What does West do? If West discards a club, then all of my clubs become high, that last baby club and dummy. If West discards the 10 of diamonds, then now my nine of diamonds becomes high. So what would you do on the West hand? Well, you're pretty confident that South holds the ace, king, queen of clubs. So on the West hand, I think I'll throw away the 10 of diamonds. Well, that's easy now because now my nine of diamonds is a winner. But West was gone either way. It didn't matter whether West threw a diamond or a club. Have a another look at that hand, everyone, on the uh, replay. And we're on the lucky last hand here. And this one's a pretty straightforward one. But this is a hand where instead of using fourth suit forcing, we actually use something called third suit forcing. And it's quite specific to auctions that come up. Uh, one of a major, two of a minor response from north, two clubs, and south raises to three clubs. Well, two suits have been bid only. And once there's a minor suit fit, the, uh, the preeminent game to bid would be three no trump. But if I look at the north hand, uh, north can't bid three no trump because they don't have spades covered. But they do have diamonds covered. And that's what third suit says in these auctions. It says, I've got diamonds covered here, partner. It's natural. If I had diamonds and spades covered, I'd bid three no trump. So when the bidding comes back to South, South says, well, brilliant, you've got diamonds covered. I've got spades covered. We've only got a club fit. So let's aim for three no trump. So that third suit. So whenever the third suit is bid, everyone, essentially what we're saying is it's natural. It doesn't promise necessarily four cards, but it will have stoppers in the third suit. And it essentially says to partner, I'm looking for three no trump. Okay, so let's play this hand. We're in three no trump. Uh, yep, actually, Tony's just mentioned something to me which is good, and uh, other people have brought this up um, um, before. And the way you remember it is that once two suits have been bid, the third suit tells. So two tells, which means that uh, once two suits have been bid, the third suit tells partner they've got a stopper. Once three suits have been bid, it tends to ask partner. So two tells, that's how you remember it. Once you bid the third suit, that that's saying, uh, partner, um, I've got something in diamonds over here. I'm not asking you, I've got something. Okay, the opponent's lead a spade. Well, this hand looks pretty good. And at trick one, uh, when East contributes the king, just in case, uh, West is underled from ace, jack, ten, and interior sequence, and we win with the ace. So now, everyone, look at the club suit. We've got nine of them, but we're missing the jack. If all four are in one hand, east or west, then you have a safety play in order to be able to guard against one hand holding all four. And that is, you take the top honor in the hand with the two cards. That is, you play low across to either the ace or queen, and if jack to four is over here, you come back to the king and finesse through west. If jack to four is over here, you can finesse through east. So that's what we do at trick two. We take a safety play in clubs, guarding against the four one break, and west shows out. So east holds four to the jack, three left. So you'll have to take a club finesse eventually. But I think because I'm playing match points here, we're gonna try for uh, some extra tricks in, in hearts. I'm gonna take two heart, heart finesses through East. So that's what I do now. I go with the odds. This will work 75% of the time. We've lost to the king. And now they continue with spades. Well, we have to hop over to dummy with the club to the queen, we know where the jack of clubs is. And then we finesse against the jack of clubs in the east because we've got the nine in our hand. And now we take the king of clubs, setting up the 10 and dummy. Crossing over to a diamond to the king or the ace, taking our fifth club winner.
taking our winning king of diamonds because in the end game, we're intending to take a heart finesse and we want to keep all three of those hearts just in case something good happens and they all drop. Well, if you were in a team's game here, everyone, you would have, which, which I really want to play on BBO, by the way, I think we should have a team's day. Um, you've got your nine tricks and you probably wouldn't risk your contract from here. But if you're playing a game at the club and it's normally match points or a BBO tournament, normally match points, then you'd go for the over tricks and you'd take another finesse here because the first finesse lost, so the second one is likely to win. We finesse again, risking going down and it wins. Now the ace drops the king, queen and we've got an extra trick everyone, 12 tricks. All those extra over tricks can make a big difference, everyone. Everyone, thank you. Hope you enjoyed that. Sorry it took a little bit longer than usual. Um, uh, as I said, BBO tournament tomorrow afternoon at 1.30. Uh, please let me know if you're looking for a partner. And uh, tomorrow there's another lesson in the morning at 10 o'clock. And I hope you all have a lovely day. And I'll keep the microphones open.